Hey, Mark, we are back. We we got a little lazy and we, we took a week off. So this week we are, of course, watching True Detective, but we got to talk about two episodes because we watched episode five entitled If You Have Ghosts, and we now, three minutes ago, just finished episode six, Hunters in the Dark. We haven't talked about either. We were pretty disappointed, and especially you coming off episode four, which we thought was a little slow and tedious and kind of took us off the track as it basically only focused on the the relationship between uh, Hayes and his wife. But we dove right back in in episode five and continued on in six. This has been all about the mystery. Hayes' wife seems to be an afterthought now after she got kind of her one big Emmy episode to shine. Woodard is dead. We had a big explosion. We have suspects galore. We have some big reveals. We have a cliffhanger ending as we head into our last two episodes. Rather than having me just read off a list of events that have happened, Mark, just tell me where you're at after watching these two episodes. Where are you in this journey, and what are you thinking about the road we've taken over the last two hours? Um, I'm back to enjoying it a lot more, and I think that's because I, I kind of had an epiphany sort of after episode five in that I don't feel like there is a mystery to solve here by following the clues. This isn't an episode of Murder, She Wrote. They're not going to lay out everything I need to know in the first 15 minutes, and then I just have to try and put it together. I think it's more about the atmosphere and about being for the long for the ride. And I, I felt this way because I was starting to get confused with the time jumps. And I was having trouble tracking, okay, what is happening when and where and, and piecing it together into a coherent narrative. And then I realized, you know, the whole point is that this main character is suffering from dementia and he's unable to do that. And instead of me trying to impose order on something that maybe intentionally doesn't have order, I need to just sit back, let the information come to me and quit trying to anticipate and figure out what's going on. And, and I found once I did that, once I stopped trying to guess, I was enjoying it a hell of a lot more. And so I really, really got a lot out of uh, episode six because this was the first time in all of them that I really wasn't doing that. And I think episode six is a pretty surprising episode to me. Not, not because anything that I think happened in it is that surprising, but that it happened in episode six and not mm -hmm. in episode seven. Like this felt like it should have been the penultimate episode, right? Cause you have the, the Hoyt farm reveal and the, the pink room. And we're assuming that we are about to see the, the end of the dad as he, he finds the pink room. So, so I was kind of surprised they revealed all that. Cause I'm like, you still have two hours to, to fill. And we still have to know the horrible thing that, Hayes and and his partner did in in 91 or whatever that they've referred to and how this is going to all end and how two 70 year old men are going to be able to resolve it I'm I'm assuming it's not going to be an action finale they're not going to battle someone in a swamp and get stabbed a bunch of times and whatnot but that kind of took me by surprise that we're having an episode like episode six this quickly in it because it gave away a lot more than I thought we were gonna get and I, I guess I'm also kind of hoping it's giving away a lot more than I thought we were gonna get in episode 6 because I don't want like an M. Night Shyamalan 17 twists coming in the next two episodes to throw mm -hmm. us off so do you think this is a case of they're just putting their cards on the table and now the next two episodes are just going to be letting us see how it all kind of transpired yeah I, I think to a certain extent see I was a little surprised um, and I, actually, my, my theory that we weren't supposed to figure out the mystery was actually kind of validated to me by episode six in that this whole, oh, Tom is gay and fighting its subplot gets introduced this late. Now, how is that relevant to the mystery? Well, if it was relevant to me solving the mystery, I should have known about this in episode two or three. To have it drop so late means it's not really critical information to solving the mystery. I feel like, okay, that this is the game they're going to play, that you're just supposed to sit back, let these new revelations hit you, and just process it as it comes instead of trying to put the puzzle together yourself. See, and I actually thought that the revealing of of Tom being gay, and, and I, I'm a big gay rights supporter, so this might be my own personal bias coming in, but that, that almost kind of was a clearing of his character. 
letting you know he he's not going to turn out to be the bad guy. I had mentioned, and I can't remember if it was on the last episode or just in a Twitter discussion, that a theory I had been toying with around episode four time was that he didn't do it, but he was doing something bad to the children and that the the cousin and the mom were trying to get the children out and the son had died accidentally and now they were screwed and didn't know what to do so they kept the daughter in hiding and they kind of built into that theory like as as things were going that looks like it could be viable in episode five and early going in episode six and i almost saw that revelation to be like no that's not why the the mom doesn't hates him and they have this volatile relationship it's because they're they're not remotely in love. They're not even attracted to the same type of people, that type of thing. So I kind of saw it as like, this is the, we've been building him up as a suspect and now we're dropping the, this is actually what was going on with him. This is why their relationship was like this. He is not really the suspect anymore. And uh, I, I think it's interesting because we do actually have, and normally we hold off on listener comments till the end, but I am going to bring one up because we had a couple, but one actually basically predicted everything we've had forward, and it's our friend of the show, Smithers, who you can find at Twitter at S-S-S-S Lithers. Um, uh, but he had he put out, after episode four, he had put out a theory that it was the chicken person because he had lost a daughter, he had a motive, he kind of fits into that, uh, that Pizzolatto guy, big conspiracy from the, the rich elites mm-hmm. in the background that we saw in season one, that we saw in season two. So it, it made total sense and that these other characters in front of us are kind of a, a misdirect. And that looks to be the route we're going. So hats off to him because it looks like he he did solve it. And and while I don't think they wanted it to be as simple as maybe I would have wanted it to be with the kind of main characters in front of us, they did say in interviews that they wanted this to be a solvable case. But, but I think your observations about how the story is structured is a really good one. And I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because something I was thinking in this episode was how frustrated I was with all the time jumping and having, mm-hmm. having to memorize, especially because Dorf changes a little bit, but Mahershala Ali between 80 and 90, it's, it's the length of his hair. Yeah. And it's not a massive length in hair. So it's very easy to be caught up in not knowing what time you're in. And I did find that frustrating, but I didn't think of it from the perspective of what Hayes is going through in his real life trying to sort it out. And I think you're dead on when you say it out there because there are even those moments where you're in 1990 and Hayes is looking through the glass in the interrogation room, but his reflection in the glass is yeah. 2015 Hayes. So it, you're right. I think that is what they're they're building for, and they've, they've done that to a T. And I think it's something that's going to reward repeat viewings of the series but mm-hmm. I find it a tad frustrating to muddle through at times. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's and I that was one of kind of my biggest internal things. And like I said, with episode five, especially episode six, when I just let that go and I stopped trying to be smarter than the writers, um, I found that I was able to appreciate it more. This is definitely a show I'm I'm really going to want to rewatch after I've seen it all. Um, I think to to understand a little more completely. Um, two points you brought up. One, I didn't see this as the clearing of the father of the suspect. Maybe it's just because I'm dense, but he never really seemed like a plausible suspect to me. I mean, they didn't, to my memory, they didn't bring up the fact that he might have gone somewhere after 6.30 until this episode. I, I thought he had always been at the house and pretty much accounted for he let me let me clarify what I what I meant because I think I misspoke a little. Not necessarily because even in my theory I presented, he wasn't the killer. He was just doing something sh- bad to the kids that would have led to them trying to be evacuated, which led to an accidental murder, which obviously isn't true. But it's just kind of that everyone has a dark secret they're hiding. All of these main characters, and we're trying to see how those dark secrets fit into what happened to the kids and how everything had played out. And now we've learned what his dark secret is, and it's not something that's actually, in my view, bad. It's just he's right. he's a gay man who has a lot of self-loathing <laughs> about being gay, and that's affected his marriage and how others treat and relate him and his ability to hold a job. So that's that's more what I meant, is more kind okay. of his dark secret was revealed, and it's not that heinous or heinous okay. at all. Well, that perfectly segues into my second point, which is I really did not like the use of homosexuality as a deep, dark secret in this. I thought it was wholly unnecessary. 
Um, you don't need that to explain why he doesn't get along with his wife. There are any one of thousands of plausible explanations for why two poor people who, you know, randomly maybe, you know, got knocked up one night would not have a fulfilling marriage. So I didn't think it was necessary. I also felt like it brushed up a little too closely to some homophobia in there, which the show didn't need. For the 1990s, it's very likely that revelations of, of a him being homosexual would be treated very negatively by the two cops because they're for that time period, they're likely not to think and, very highly of it. And, and, and not, not to generalize, but we're, we're also talking, we're not talking about San Francisco. We're talking about rural Arkansas right. in the 1990s. Right. It, it, it felt wholly unnecessary to me and brought in these elements, which didn't overshadow everything else in it, but still added a real uncomfortable tinge that I, I didn't appreciate and I didn't think was necessary. I mean, I'm all for it if the story would require it, but it felt like such a, an easy sort of cop out. And one more thing to throw in there to get you guessing for maybe 15, 20 more seconds before they then immediately stamp that theory out. So I, I didn't really care for that. It didn't ruin the episode for me, but it just felt wholly unnecessary to me. And I thought that that should have been addressed, especially, too, when later on they're talking to the, the highway patrolman who's now a security guy. And as they're leaving, he looks at um, Hayes and says, oh, you've got a nice body. Oh, come on. That just unless that really pays off and I don't see how it could, that felt really unnecessary and really kind of a cheap sort of Mr. X. I think it, I think it's just a lot of them trying to throw Mr. X at at the yeah. wall yeah and i thought it was it feels like a cheap misdirect to me but especially because we have, yeah i don't think there was anyone no matter what what he would have ended that conversation with there was no way you left that conversation with that security guard and we're like that guy's on the up and up i trust right. him <laughs> like he, right. he's, he's not lying since, especially since you know he vanished so you know there's more mystery coming with him yeah so, yeah and even if it is kind of a misdirect i mean they they he's the guy in the pink room, you know, right. behind him. So we already, we already know he's up to no good, even without having just basic common sense. They literally show him <laughs> right. being right. up to no good. So I, I think it's something where it was, a, it's a lot of things thrown at the, the wall. And I think yeah. they've tried to create a theme of just a community that where where everyone's suspicious of everyone and no one supports them. You know, we had Hayes, you know, going into the African American community, the Paul, the the poor community, we have him being treated poorly by the white people when he's doing his job. You know, we have the Woodard as Native American and Vietnam vets, and we see how they're treated and whatnot. So I think you know you could blame it on trying to create that aesthetic and them just saying, "Oh, well, here's another subsection of people that are uncomfortable in this." But like, they never built towards it at all. It just felt yeah. like, "Oh, by the way, he's gay. That's what he did." So right and. <laughs> And you know what? If you gave me 15 seconds, I could extrapolate that none of those people would be very welcoming to a homosexual in their midst anyway. It's, I didn't need that to know that, oh, hey, they don't like gay people either. You know, it's kind of a given. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly what we've seen from from Lucy, you, you don't need a, a deeper explanation of why someone would have an unhappy marriage with her. I think right. that... That care. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that maybe that gives us a little bit more understanding of Lucy from some aspects. Maybe that's part of her problem. But I don't care enough about Lucy as a character that that type of yeah. motivation matters yeah, no. to me. She's 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 a she's a plot device device more than anything else, really. Um, I also rolled my eyes a little bit at the revelation that the son was sleeping with the reporter. That was another one. That was another misdirect that felt a little half-baked to begin with and then is just kind of summarily dismissed. Now, again, there's two episodes. This may pay off in some way I'm just not seeing. But for right now, that just felt a little sloppy and a little unnecessary again. Yeah, I think they're trying to show us that when Hayes' mind is firing properly, it's firing well. Uh, but there's been, you know, for, for having a, an actor I, I like playing his his son I, mm -hmm. they, they haven't used him for anything like it's such a wasted role and again a lot of the stuff i think that happens in 2015 up to this point seems a little bit of a wasted 
opportunity. I don't feel like they've developed a ton from there other than to do some of the things we've talked about, cast doubt on what you're you're seeing in the other timelines. Um, but we do have two more episodes, so maybe that yeah. stuff is going to kind of wrap together a little bit nicer than it has so far. But I think there's there's a lot of threads hanging right now. So yeah. it, it'll be interesting how they wrap it up. You know, if I look at season one, I have a lot of confidence they can do it. If I look at season two, I have a lot of confidence they can fuck it up. So, But but the real question I have going forward now is, is and this was something else that I, I kind of came across in episode five, is ultimately I'm not sure what the big mystery is. Is the big mystery going to be who killed the kid and kidnapped the girl? Or is it going to be what did the two of them do that broke up their partnership and and basically sent them spiraling off? Because with episode five, it really seemed to me like they're starting to run these almost as co-equal mysteries. And it almost makes me wonder if the, the most, you know, M. Night Shyamalan twist is going to be that for the viewer, the who did it isn't the big mystery. It's the what happened to break up their partnership. Yeah, well, and maybe that they they solved it in 1991. And Mahershala Ali has trouble remembering that they solved it now in, in 1991, which is why Wes doesn't want to be involved in any of this. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's going to be a lot that comes. Now, before we duck out the door, we had one more comment that I wanted to read. This was left on YouTube. You can uh, leave any comments you leave. We will read, assuming they're, you know, appropriate enough. And so far, they all have been. So this is from Lee James 567. And this is after season four that we were, pre- or episode four, we were pretty critical of. Lee wrote, I love this show this year, but I understand your criticism. However, I disagree about the whole they did not do enough to show racism in uh, that Detective Hayes has had to put up with it, I think, just as much in your face from the beginning. In episodes, you could see it most of the time as he gave orders and when his superiors addressed him. So Lee thought the racism was tackled a little bit heavier where we thought it was uh, not brought up very much. And then it was really heavy handed in episode four. Uh, it's something I'll have to go back and, and rewatch, but I still think they could have done a better job of peppering it in there throughout the beginning of the series because I, it was something I thought about before episode four, and it was something I thought about a lot then when it was happening in episode four. But thank you for writing, Lee. We appreciate um, it. I'm actually also, that that's a little curious too, because, um, I mean, obviously this is an anonymous YouTube um, commenter, so we don't know anything about them. You know, it may not surprise anybody, but both of us are um, white males. Yep. And, you know, it's entirely possible, and maybe, and I'll have to be looking for this, but on a rewatch that there are those things and it's just not something that we're maybe as conditioned to notice. Yeah. And That's um, fair. that, that comment is definitely going to make me re-examine those first, uh, especially four episodes and see, okay, is there stuff here that I'm not missing because it's just not the kind of thing I'm tuned to looking for. So thank you very much for that comment. Um, I'm really interested in it, that. Perfect. Well, that is going to do it for us on this episode. We have wrapped up uh, episode five and episode six of season three of True Detective, and we will be back next week with a recap of episode seven. So until then, take it easy. See you. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at kidsseriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.